A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. Whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to John, teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers asked him, and what is it we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone. Be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah, the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in this way and many other ways, he preached good news to them. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's always a little bit of a exercise to get out of the ambo with the mic and come over and speak to you. You have this beautiful picture of John the Baptist, because he's referred to today in the Gospel. Uh, John was waiting. He was waiting for the Messiah. This is the period of waiting. You notice the vestment color changed today to a, a kind of rose from the purple that we've been wearing for the season of Advent. And it's reflected in the readings. First of all, notice which candle we lit today, the pink candle. Now pink is not the uh, key point here. It's not purple, it's rejoicing. It's a little more excitement. First reading from Zephaniah, shout for joy. There'll be more from that scripture. Philippians, Paul writes this letter to the people of Philippi from jail. Rejoice in the Lord always. And of course, we just pronounce the gospel anticipating the Messiah. Rejoice. That reading, all the readings today, could have been in our local newspapers today. That They could have been the readings on your Twitter feed or, or your Facebook page. Because amidst all of our preparation toward Christmas, we have people in the street, we had food insecurity, we have a great experience of Catholic charities yesterday, There was a big truck gathering food yesterday, distributed it over this weekend to many, many families with food insecurity. We're encouraged to sort out our closets and to replace what we're going to give the kids or ourselves and remove the coats and jackets and clothing that are wearable, clean them and bring them to Catholic Charities, the parish, or a collection site. 
amidst all the joy, and you heard the Rockefeller dances, and you saw the lights, and you go on Fifth Avenue, and everything is lit up, and music is played, amidst all that joy, there's an undercurrent that's not so joyful all the time. You figure it's a kind of ironic that here we are on the third Sunday moving toward Christmas. We are celebrating with great joy amidst hardship of the world. The numbers of the COVID variant are going up in some parts of the world. The governor of the state encouraged everyone to wear masks out of fear. And I come here today to you and read with the scriptures and announce rejoice. Joy f should fill our hearts. Paul could have put this on the front page of today's newspapers. The Lord is near. Rejoice. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything give thanks and make your requests known to God. That was 2,000 years ago. Zephaniah pronounces the hope that he's trying to give to the people of Jerusalem as they're returning home after another period of annihilation, deportation, displacement. Is that a message that makes sense? Lower level anxiety, fear, hunger, food insecurity, returning from war, and yet the scriptures are saying, rejoice, dismiss all anxiety. Is it tongue in cheek? Is it like sarcasm? No. We have the reason for the joy. Our faith is the reason for joy. The people of Israel got through it and made it to the temple and rebuilt the temple and rebuilt the country. The early Christians were martyred but came out of the martyrdom stronger and bigger. We went through and are going through various chaoses in our world. You want to start this year alone? The, 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 the social unrest, the COVID unrest, the, the anti Asian, the anti-black, the anti-white movements, crazy things that should cause a great deal of anxiety. But we as Christians are being encouraged by the word of God, remove all anxiety from your hearts and rejoice because the Lord is near. And the Lord is not near on the calendar for December 25th or 4th, the Lord is near when we gather in prayer. Whenever and wherever that is. You don't think Paul in jail, knowing that the sword was going to soon cut his head off, had anxiety? Physical anxiety. You don't think the people who were trapped outside of Jerusalem had anxiety because they want to get back to rebuild the temple? But the scriptures are encouraging us to build on what we have. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul makes it clear, just in case we need a reiteration. Make all your thoughts known to God by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving. Make it all known to God. So what is, what's, what's going on here in the scriptures? First of all, the church looks forward to the return of Christ in glory at the end of time. The Messiah, the early people around the, the, sea, the, the Jordan River thought John was the Messiah. And he said, no, 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 it's not me. He's coming with fire and power and the Holy Spirit. I'm not the one. He's coming, and I'm not worthy enough to undo his shoes. 
He's coming. I'm not the Messiah. Always pointing. John is always pointing. John is always bringing us to Jesus. In the Holy Gospel, in the Eucharist, when we pray. And that's the thing that's going to make it for us. Think of the last 24 hours. Any of us. Think of what experience of tension or anxiety or conflict was in our lives. Whether it was a family or a friend, whether it was the incidents in the world, whether it was the gift didn't arrive and it's not coming till December 27. Think of all the things that potentially got to us. But we're here, worshiping, because ultimately they did not. Even death did not get to us as we pray for our people and family and friends right next door in the hospital or any of the hospitals in Manhattan. We're praying for them with joy. Not giggly, ha-ha, goofy kind of happiness. Authentic joy. And maybe, maybe we need to reflect on that word prayer to really connect with what joy is. The solid relationship we have with Christ. That's the reason for our joy. The attitude of optimism, knowing that whatever I go through, Christ is with me because I'm taking Paul's advice and presenting it all to Christ. Knowing that he hears me, knowing that he's taking my prayers and presenting them to the Father, knowing that he has given me the Holy Spirit to increase my power to pray over and through the anxieties of life. Oh, we've got plenty of anxieties. We've got plenty of reason for anxiety. But at the core of who we are, that anxiety is removed when we speak to Christ. Now, you've you got to use your head, too. All of us do. We have to use our head and hearts. So we've got to pray every day. We've got to bring God into our life every day when we go shopping, when we're home, wherever we are. Bring God into my life. Emmanuel, God with us. So that when I'm going through my daily experiences, I know I'm not alone. I know he's with me. The foundation of our faith is prayer. The foundation of our faith is prayer to Christ. The foundation of our faith is prayer to Christ presented to the Father. Talk about comfort. Talk about security. But, but there's not enough food on, on the table. Still pray and th in thanksgiving. But maybe there's a coat missing or there's one that was stolen and, and now these nuts in different cities throughout the world breaking and running. And don't give me, they're, they're, they're doing it because they're, they don't have enough clothing. They're doing it because they're greedy. They're doing it because they're thugs. And even in light of that chaos, we as Christians need to pray. Pray for a change of heart for those loonies. Pray for a, heart, a change of heart for some of our political figures who place votes before you and me. Pray for our country going through a chaotic turmoil. You know what? The country's been through turmoil before. I, I mean, just open up the history books. You want to start with the Civil War? You want to go before that? Revolutionary War? You want to go through one or two? Where, where do you want to go? We've had chaos. We've had anxiety. But we as Christians hold on to Christ, the foundation of our security, and the reason for our joy. Yeah, 
There's a song on Broadway. One of the feature lines of it is, let it go. I'm not going to sing it for you, guaranteed. Let it go. Well, it's not that simple, but whatever the anxiety is, I'm saying, if you can't let it go, at least don't let it consume you. Displace it with prayer. Displace it with hope. Displace it with Christ. So if you get notice, oh, your gift is not going to arrive until Easter. Okay. Give thanks to God that you were able to order a gift that will arrive at Easter. The kid's gift is not going to arrive, not going to be there on time, or your cookies burnt, or your lights went out, and I've had that experience. Give joyce, rejoicing to God over the fact that you have lights, that you have bread and dough. Because some people don't even have that. And even those people who have nothing, we are an inviting to be part of our rejoicing. Even the person on the street, even the addict, even the homeless child, we do what we can do in, in case we forgot what to do. <laughs> They try to confront John. How should we get ready for the Messiah? What, 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 are, what are we to do? Messiah, uh, excuse me, John makes no bones about it. Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Stop overcharging. Stop cheating. Return the change that inadvertently came into your hand. Do not practice extortion, emotional or financial. Some of us have power over others in our families. Get off your high horse and be human. These people are made in the image of God as well as you are, and they are valuable. Don't you dare hurt one another. Don't you dare curse one another. This is John, my translation. Don't accuse one another falsely. It's none of your business that someone is gay or black or white or Italo-American or European. He or she was made as you were made. And your job is not to bring him or her down because you don't agree with the philosophy or the psychology or the behavior. Your job, my job, or our job, to pray constantly, to let God know where our security is. Want more from, from John? Accuse no one falsely. John is encouraging us with a finger pointing to Christ. In the Byzantine tradition, as you know, there's an iconostasis around the sanctuary, and in the center of that iconostasis is the door to which the priests and deacons enter to go to the altar. On one side of the iconostasis is Theotokos, Mary holding Jesus, to remind us, in order to get into the sanctuary, in order to receive the Eucharist, Ajesum per Mariam. We go through Mary, the human mother of Jesus. On the other side, the finger. John the Baptist pointing the way to the door, the way to the sanctuary, the way to the Eucharist. And that's what he's doing today. He's pointing to all of us. Excuse me, he's not pointing to us, he's pointing for all of us to Jesus. Dismiss all anxiety. Rejoice. Gaudete. Rejoice. We have Christ as our foundation.